Hi, my name is Sybil, and today I will be talking about authority. Throughout my life, I've always been interested in the culture of the Italian Renaissance. For this, I have two reasons to blame. Number one, my attachment to the video game Assassin's Creed. Number two, my formative trip to Italy in 2015, where I first had my first taste of European history. In the last three years, I developed an affinity for reading philosophy. Thank you, eighth grade literature teacher. Nine months ago, my principal told me to pick something academic to study for an entire year. In order to keep me interested in a topic for that long, I decided to combine these two interests, the Renaissance and philosophy. I figured that all I would be doing was studying this topic and getting a grade for it. What I ended up doing, however, was discovering how one Renaissance man's forgotten writings changed the trajectory of political history forever, and how this man subsequently got crucified for this. That man's name was Niccolo Machiavelli. You may know of him, you may not. All you need to know of is that right now, Machiavelli's name has been slandered for centuries. Any person who knows of him in this crowd will likely know of him as a bad guy, a supporter of tyranny, immorality, and violence. But what exactly gave him this reputation? In order to answer this question, we're going to have to go back 500 years to what Machiavelli did. Machiavelli was a famous diplomat in the 15th century in Italy. At the height of his career, Machiavelli was tortured, exiled, and socially buried by the very same government he had served for over 10 years. In his exile, he wrote a book titled De Principibus, literally translated on principalities. He never published this work, but when this work was published five years after his passing, it caused a chain reaction in society so strong that all the most powerful kingdoms, all the most famous principalities, and the Catholic Church itself decided to ban this book for the coming hundred years. Maybe you know its modern day name, The Prince. Maybe you don't. That's okay, because the most important thing you will learn from this talk is that the foundation of modern politics was established when this book was published. What Niccolò Machiavelli did is that he established a doctrine titled Machiavellianism. <laughs> in this book, Machiavelli established the tenets of ruling, what people in power need to do in order to keep that power. Many people agreed with this book, but almost all of them ended up criticizing it because of one particular tenet. Machiavelli's perceived justification of cruelty. The prince stated that someone in power should be good as much as possible, but also be prepared to commit evil. As the world is not a place where everyone adheres to the same morality, there will always be people who threaten the power of the prince. Thus, a prince is allowed to commit extreme actions of violence, mass killing, torture, etc. Because it becomes necessary in certain occasions to protect the stability of the state. I am not here to defend Machiavelli against centuries worth of slander or slander him myself. I am here to tell you why this line of thought was so impactful. Why did Machiavelli help change politics forever? Before we answer this question, let's be fair. Machiavelli technically said nothing new. Power politics using forceful, violent tactics in ruling to force hands. This kind of tactic had always existed. It existed before Machiavelli, and it decided to exist after him. The most important part of Machiavelli's legacy is what he managed to standardize. Before Machiavelli, rulers and princes had always used cruelty and forceful ruling to keep their power. Oftentimes, they committed or gave orders to commit violent acts in public, on innocent and guilty parties alike. However, when they did so, they felt guilty. These rulers felt that they had committed bad actions. This hypocrisy of committing the bad act and feeling bad over it created a non-stop cycle of moral judgment. 
Had the rulers committed a bad act, or had they done something that was necessary? Had they sinned, or not? In this book, Machiavelli gave an answer to this question. Machiavelli took the old behaviors of princes and tried to justify them in modern way, as modern as 500 years ago is. Rulers were in a cycle of guilt perpetrated by morality that has guided human behavior for centuries. As a response, Machiavelli established the prince as having a higher morality. Since rulers have to make decisions concerning human life, the state, etc., they cannot be held to the standard of a moral citizen. Machiavelli does not teach immoral lessons. He does not preach cruelty. But he instead teaches moral lessons designed for those in power, with those with authority. Machiavellianism is a teaching of how to rule, because as a ruler with responsibility, you must bypass what is seen as morally correct in order to see some goals through. Considering Machiavelli wrote this treatise 500 something years ago, Machiavelli's authority figures are very different to the 40 figures we see today. So why do we actually still read it 500 years on? The answer has to do with the fact that this book is what we consider a classic. In classic literature or philosophy, there is always one quality that applies to society and by extension human nature. The prince describes one truth about humanity that is quite hard to accept in many cases. The fact that human nature is not inherently good. The fact that human nature can be selfish, unstable, and volatile. So when human nature is in this state of chaos, it is the responsibility of the prince to take on responsibilities that normal humans cannot take in order to establish order in this chaotic world. At its core, Machiavellianism was offered by a man dealing with the political realities of the situation he had observed for years. You can choose to agree or disagree with him, because we all know that this is not applicable to modern day society to an extent. What we cannot deny, however, is that Machiavelli's lesson is enduring and much more complex than history tends to give him credit for. Thank you everyone.